Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be learning how to get started with Anaconda by Continuum Analytics. Now, if you don't know what Anaconda is, it is a data science platform that comes with a lot of stuff right out of the box. So it comes with a Python distribution, a package manager called Conda, a way to manage environments, and a lot of other libraries and packages pre-installed. Now, these packages are usually related to data science, so it comes with things like NumPy, SciPy, Jupyter Notebooks, and things like that. Now, the number one question people usually have when they first hear about something like Anaconda is, why would you need it? So what benefit do you get from Anaconda as opposed to just installing these packages through PIP or something like that? Well, you shouldn't feel obligated to use Anaconda. It's really just an option that some people prefer. So if you're getting along just fine with regular Python and haven't run into any problems, then there's really no huge reason to switch. But a lot of people, especially those in the data science community who might not be full-time developers, they find that Anaconda simplifies a lot of common problems that beginners run into. And it's also good to use in classrooms so that you know your students are all on the same page. So things like installing Python on multiple platforms, separating out different environments, uh, dealing with not having correct privileges and getting up and running with specific packages and libraries, all of those are things that Anaconda can help with. So let's go ahead and download Anaconda here and we'll walk through some of the features. So I'm here on the Anaconda download page and if you just Google Python Anaconda, then this should be one of the first results. And you can also Google the company name, which is Continuum Analytics. So at the top of the download page here, we can see that there is a link for the list of packages that comes pre-installed with Anaconda. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna pull up Python 3.5. Now, if we scroll down here, then you can see that it comes with a lot of stuff right out of the box. So all those packages can take up a lot of space. Now, if hard drive space is an issue for you and you don't want to download all those packages, then they do offer a download here called Miniconda. And Miniconda is a small bootstrap version that comes with their Python distribution, essential packages, and Conda. And we'll talk about Conda in just a second. But we're going to go ahead and download the entire thing. So that's going to include all of the packages that it comes pre-installed with. So the download is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to download this for my Mac, but if you're on a Windows or a Linux machine, then you can just choose one of those for your operating system. So I'm just going to choose OS X here, and then I'm going to download this graphical installer. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this here, and then I'll just wait for this download to finish. Okay, so once that is downloaded, let's go ahead and open that up and run through the installer. Now we're pretty much just going to be clicking through and accepting defaults here. So I'm going to go ahead and agree to these, and I'm going to stall only for me, and I'm going to leave the default location. And so now I'm just going to fast forward until this is finished installing. Okay, so now that that download is finished, I'm just going to go ahead and close down my browser here and pull up my terminal. Okay, so when we installed Anaconda, it should have automatically added that to our path. So to test this, we can just go ahead and type in Python. Now, if everything installed correctly, then we should have a Python version 3 here, and you can see that it's using this Anaconda distribution. And if you install the full version of Anaconda, then we should be able to import certain packages that were included with that download. So I should just be able to type in import NumPy, and run that, and you can see that that didn't give us an error, so that package does exist. And just to test that further, let's go ahead and also import uh, matplotlib and see if that works. So you can see that that worked also, so we already have a couple of packages here. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and exit out of Python here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and clear my screen. So that's all there is to installing Anaconda. And depending on what kind of system you're on, a lot of people find that kind of installation of Python much easier than doing it manually, especially whenever you get a lot of popular packages out of the box. Now, if you do need to add more packages, we still have PIP, which most of you are probably familiar with. And if you'd like to learn more about PIP, then I do have a separate video on that. But if I go ahead and type in PIP list, then you can see that it lists out all of the packages that came pre-installed with Anaconda. Now, Anaconda also comes with its own package manager called Conda, and Conda is useful because we can use it to install non-Python packages and dependencies. So it can install some things that wouldn't necessarily make sense with pip. So we can view all the commands that we can use with Conda by running conda-help. Now you can see that a lot of these uh, conda commands are similar to our pip commands. So in here we have uh, list and search, and install and things like that. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here and let's run conda list. 
Now, if we compared this to our PIP list, then we'd notice that all of these with the uh, PY tags here are Python packages that were also listed in our PIP list. So if you ever need to install additional packages, then you can try running Conda install. And if for some reason you have any issues with using Conda or just prefer PIP, then you can still use PIP install to install packages. Now, one thing that's really interesting and useful about Conda is that you can use it to manage your environments too. So some of you may have seen my video on virtual ENV where you can make isolated virtual environments for different projects and Conda can do that as well. And it even has a few advantages over virtual ENV. So let's take a look at how we can create some virtual environments. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth about why we should be using virtual environments. I covered that in some previous videos, but basically what they're used for is when we want to work on multiple projects, these projects may use different versions of different packages and possibly even different versions of Python. So instead of trying to get all of our projects to conform to our global installations and versions, we can instead just create these separate environments that have the specific packages and versions that we need. So let's say that we wanted to start working on a Flask app. Now to create a new environment for this application using Conda, then we can just say Conda create, and then I'm gonna do a dash dash name here. I'm just gonna call this my app. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pass in some starting packages that we want. So I'm gonna say Flask and SQL Alchemy. Now you have to have at least one starting package when you create a new environment with Conda, but if you don't want one, then you can just pass in something like PIP or Python, but it is required to have at least one. But in this case, we're gonna be building a Flask application anyway. So let's just go ahead and pass Flask and SQL Alchemy in as those packages. And then it's gonna show you what it's going to install. And let's just go ahead and hit yes. Okay, so now we want to activate that new environment that we just created. Uh, now this is going to be different on a Mac than on Windows. On Windows, I believe you can just say something like activate my app. But on Mac, this is actually going to be source activate my app. So if I run that, you can tell that we're in our new environment here because it added the name of our environment above our prompt right here. And if I clear my screen, you can see that that still stays there. And once we have that environment activated, if we do a pip list, then you can see that we only have our base Flask and SQL Alchemy packages. And on Mac or Linux, if we want to see the path to which Python we're using, then we can run which Python. And you can see that the Python that we're using is now within this My App environment. Okay, and once you're done with your environment and want to deactivate it, on Windows, you can just say uh, deactivate. But on Mac or Linux, that's actually going to be source deactivate. So we can also use Conda to create environments using different versions of Python also. So let's say that I wanted to create an environment for the same Flask app, but using Python 2.7 instead of Python 3.5. Now I'm just going to bring back up that command that we used to uh, create that environment. But instead, I'm just going to change this name to my app 2.7. And I'm also going to pass in this keyword here, Python equals 2.7. Now this Python doesn't have uh, dashes before, so it's not an option, it's just Python 2.7 there. So now I'm going to go ahead and run that, and it's going to tell us what packages it's going to install, so I'm going to go ahead and hit yes on that. And once that environment is done installing, uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and activate it. So I'm going to say um, source activate my app 2.7, and now that we have that activated, let's go ahead and run Python within here. And you'll see that the version of Python that we have here is Python 2.7. So specifying that version when we created our environment worked correctly. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and exit out of Python. And let's go ahead and also uh, deactivate our virtual environment there. Now one useful thing that we can do with Conda is that we can view our environments that we've created. So if I say Conda ENV list and list those out, then you can see that both of the environments that we created are there. And currently this default one, this root one is the one that's activated. And if you ever want to remove an environment, then we can just say conda remove, and then we'll pass in the name of our environment. So I'll grab this, my app here and paste that in. And now we need to uh, specify all of the packages. And if we just want to delete the entire thing, then we can just say all. And it's going to ask us if we want to continue and we can just hit yes. And now if I relist those environments, then you can see that the my app is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing for my app 2.7 also. Say yes and clear the screen. And if I list those out, then you can see we just have our root anaconda environment. 
Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope this gave you an idea of why some people would prefer using Anaconda for their Python development. Now, it's not for everyone, but if you are someone who is working in data science, then it really does come with some nice packages out of the box. And you're probably going to see it recommended on certain sites. So I wanted you all to know what it was and why certain sites might suggest it. So for example, Jupyter Notebooks are becoming very popular right now. And if you go to their website, they recommend installing Anaconda because after the installation of Anaconda, you can just say uh, Jupyter Notebook and fire one of those up. And you can see that that just pops up ready to go. Uh, so speaking of Jupyter Notebooks, I plan on doing a tutorial on these very soon. Uh, so installing Anaconda might be a good starting point if you want to follow along with those videos, but it's also real easy to install through PIP. So if you don't want to install Anaconda, then you'll still be able to follow along just fine. So if anyone has any questions about what we cover in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Uh, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon. And there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.